Hello everybody, Swiftsy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the most recent Grand Hero Battle Unit, with it being Melody's counterpart in Ghoul. Sorry this video is quite late, but better late than never, you know what I'm saying? He joins the game as another Lance Fly, which already sets him back quite a bit, considering there's already quite a bit of competition in that area. But with him being the latest addition to the roster, he does come with his own advantages, so we're going to go over them in this video. Starting to look at Ghoul's base stats, we can see they come to 172, which takes him to joint top of the class in that regard, along with Seteth, and now Melody as well. Seeing how he has those stat points allocated, Ghoul tends to do quite well in every stat, with the exception of speed. At 22, it's very unlikely he's going to be outspeeding anyone else anytime soon. To make up for this, Ghoul has high defense at 38, and moderate res at 28 which when compared to his fellow Wyvern Riders, is actually quite a high amount. One thing to note is he has no super assets, which definitely is a bit of a shame. Ghoul's weapon by default is the Guard Lance. He's the second hero to come with this weapon by default, with the first being Fiora. Fiora is a 5 star exclusive in the standard summoning pool, so it's now much easier acquiring this weapon through Ghoul than it is through Fiora. The effect of the Lance is that it applies cooldown charge plus one to your foe per attack. This is a really useful effect in helping the user avoid being hit by foe specials, especially if the user is quite slow and therefore being doubled, because the attacker has a hit to charge their special and can still follow up, making them more likely to be able to use their special in that round of combat. A lot of the time a round of combat is settled by who is able to activate their special first, so being able to disrupt your foe is quite useful in that sense. If you don't want to use this native guard lance, however, there are a decent amount of alternatives that you can pick from, which we will go into when we start to have a look at builds. As for the rest of Ghoul's kit, he doesn't come with anything that's too exciting. Dragonfang, which is likely better off replaced with either Bonfire or Ignis, given his high defense stat. Brazen Attack Defense 3, which was previously available on Ares at a 4 star, so not bringing anything particularly new there. I don't think Brazens are particularly good in the A slot, so I would recommend replacing this if you were to build Ghoul. The last skill he comes with normally is Odd Attack Wave. Spring Bartra, currently in the Grail Shop, also had this skill, but aside from that it was 5 star locked, so having slightly more access to this is nice I suppose. There are a lot of units we can compare Ghoul to, unsurprisingly, and this is a far from comprehensive list, but will give you a decent idea as to how Ghoul compares to the rest of the field. We can see that he is very min-maxed, in that his speed stat has been sacrificed pretty heavily in exchange for him having a much better res stat than most of his peers. If we take Altana for example, statistically they're very similar to one another, with the biggest difference being Ghoul's extra 8 points of resistance. Altena does also get access to her own personal weapon that Gull does not in Earth the Gay Bowl. It grants her plus 3 defense, as well as inflicts minus 5 to her foe's attack and defense, as well as neutralizes their buffs to those stats, so long as they are infantry, armored, or cavalry. One of the most recent Lance Flyers we got is Sedeth, who also has the same BST as Gull. Sedeth's Spear of Assault has joint drive speed and joint drive attack built into it. Sedeth is much more speed focused than Ghoul, but lacks him in both his defense and res. If you're looking to spend Grails for a Lance Fly, then Volta is the only one with a personal weapon, and it also just got a refine. You might have seen it if you saw my previous video. Volta's BST is now certainly on the lower side, especially compared to Ghoul, but his weapon does give him plus 3 to all stats when refined, and then more stats on top of that. His res will still be pretty lacking uh, when compared to Ghoul's, however. Heath comes close to Ghoul in resistance, with him only being one point behind, but is still not as well min-maxed as Ghoul is, as he has more points in his speed despite it still being relatively low um, to average, and aside from that, Ghoul beats Heath in every stat. If we transition over to looking at builds for Ghoul, we'll first look at one where you maybe have little resources that you want to commit to him. Ghoul's default Guard Lance is solid all round for low investment and high, and doesn't necessarily need replacing should you not feel the need to do so. 
With this build, the aim is to have Ghoul act as a physical wall that can dual melee range physical threats quite well, especially in the enemy phase. Double Sturdy Stance provides Ghoul plus 8 to his attack and defense when engaged upon, making him tankier and hit back much harder. For his B slot, Quick Repost is a good choice, which allows Ghoul to get around his low speed somewhat and gives him a double when engaged upon, but if you don't have 20k feathers, then Swordbreaker allows Ghoul to counter sword users pretty hard and lets him double them even during a player phase as well. The health condition for Swordbreaker is also more lenient than it is for Quick Repost. Attack Smoke makes taking on multiple oncoming enemies easier, as you can spread the debuff to attack to nearby foes after combat, which further adds to the difficulty of taking Ghoul down. And before we move on to the more expensive builds, it's also important to note that its default Dragon Fang has been replaced here by Bonfire, as it will be for pretty much every build as it has a shorter cooldown and its scaling off defense is more synergistic with Ghoul stats than Dragonfang is. When we look at how Ghoul is when we fully invested into him, this is a pretty typical slow defensive flyer build, similar to what you might see on Ashnar for example. With Ghoul being the latest example of a slow defensive flyer, he too makes good use of this build and in fact with his improved res stat compared to his peers, he can use it probably better than them. His native guard lance is also very nice for this. Ghoul is slow enough to the point where he's pretty much guaranteed to get doubled. With guard bearing he's not too worried about the first hit but the follow up is a lot more threatening to him. The guard lance helps ensure the follow up attack is not a special activation from the foe as at that point they've been in combat they've had two more chances to lower their cooldown but the guard lance will help prevent that. If however you really want to treat Ghoul to a new lance, then there are a few good inheritance options. Courtly Candle offers more damage reduction on top of the guard bearing on the first hit, and Flowing Lance increases his dueling capabilities by applying minus 5 to the attack and defense as well as the lull effect uh, to your foe when the wielder is not adjacent to a teammate. As this is quite an enemy phase focused build, then distant counter becomes fairly essential we certainly don't want enemies to be able to attack into Ghoul for free. Combined with the guard bearing in his B slot and he becomes a lot more difficult for foes to approach. Guard bearing is quite a difficult skill to get a hold of currently but is very likely Ghoul's best B slot choice for defensive builds of which he specialises in. For the optimal C skill Ghoul can make good use of rain skills being he is a flying unit. Attack defense rain is definitely his best one as it increases his tanking potential as well as his own offense. Smokes are a good choice here too, such as Pulse Smoke, or cheaper than that, Attack Smoke. And lastly, I'm using Eye Out Shield as a seal. Bull's bulkiness is probably going to be enough most of the time to tank archers, but Eye Out Shield helps make that uh, a lot more comfortable, especially considering there are quite a few very scary archers floating about. Uh, I personally would just feel a lot safer running Eye Out Shield than not. But if you don't feel like you need to, then Attack Defense Solo or Quick Repost are good choices here as well. For our second max investment build, we're again looking to make Ghoul a bit of a wall, but taking a very different approach in doing so. Ghoul's Lover Melody released alongside him and brought a new skill to the game in Wide and Flight. With this skill, we're going to not only be making him bulkier, but also hit back much harder. The way the skill works is it takes the user's visible defense stat and subtracts the foe's visible defense stat and then divides whatever that figure is by two. That is then applied as a penalty to the foe's attack and defense during combat. So this calculation is only carried out when the user of the skill is not at least 11 visible speed slower than the foe. And I know it's visible speed and not in combat speed because I've tested it out. In fact, that's one of the reasons why this video took us so long is because I really wanted to make sure that that's how it worked. I wanted to see it for myself with my own eyes. So now that I've done that, I can go right ahead and do this. <laughs> so Ghoul being as slow as he is, he can struggle to get the Wyvern Flight to proc, but the 11 speed leeway we have is quite a lot, and with a little bit of speed investment, we can make it so it triggers uh, most of the time. The way we're doing that is with plus speed IVs, 
This takes Gaul up to 30 speed at max investment, meaning it will trigger the Wyvern Flight on anyone with 40 visible speed or less, which isn't that difficult a threshold for foes to surpass, but we can actually cheat an extra 10 speed on top of that by using Phantom Speed as our Sacred Seal. Whenever there's a skill that is directly comparing our speed stat with that of a foe, Phantom Speed will make it so the holder's speed is treated as being 10 more than it actually is. Wyvern Flight is a skill that does exactly that, so it now gives Gull an effective 40 speed when doing the Wyvern Flight calculation. So this means it will now trigger on foes with 50 visible speed or less, which, while not impossible to surpass, is pretty unlikely most of the time, outside of, you know, some more extreme circumstances. We can also inherit Attack and Defense Solo from the same melody. It doesn't help the Wyvern Flight calculation at all, but it's still a skill that plays to uh, this school's game plan quite a lot, and with this build it makes him very difficult to 1v1 for melee physical threats. He also has good synergy with the Flowing Lance, uh, I'm having him hold, seeing as that also requires Ghoul to be standing solo. So that about covers it for Ghoul here. He's certainly a competent unit, and if you're looking for a defensive Lance Flyer, then Ghoul is a very solid choice. I think the skills he comes with are a little boring, to be honest. His lack of personal weapon doesn't exactly make himself the most interesting unit in the world either. But being a little unimaginative doesn't necessarily mean you aren't good at what you do, and I think that's a pretty apt description for Ghoul. So with that being said, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you as always for your fantastic support.